Lent is an opportune time of the year when the church reminds us of what Christ has done for us and invites us all to make a constant decision to belong to Christ. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Hello and welcome to Devya Vachan, the Sunday Scripture Reflection Series. We have Reverend Father Daryl Fernandez bringing the good news to us. This episode is a reflection for the first Sunday of Lent. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted forty days and forty nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not leave by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. Welcome back to the season of Lent. Lent means many things to many people, and each of you, I'm sure, will interpret it differently. Well, dear friends, in common language, the meaning of Lent connotes these areas, giving up our likings, sacrificing our wants, saying no to drinks and many others self-imposed resolution. Therefore, every time we enter into the season of Lent, we walk with our gloomy face. But this is not the teaching of the Church, just to restrict ourselves to fasting and self-denial. Yes, dear friends, all such practices are intended to remind us only of the realities of what Lent is all about. And so during this time we fail to recall that this is the season the Church has set aside to reflect on the agony, to reflect on the passion, the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ, then we have missed the importance of the season of Lent. So dear friends, if it is going to be made different, it has to be made spiritual. It has to be made something sacred and not mere fasting or abstinence just for the sake. Let's get to the understanding of the Gospel today, which speaks about the temptation of Jesus. Jesus, my dear friends, is given three tests. Under the Old Covenant, God subjected His people Israel to, to testing in the desert, but they failed that test. Hence a new covenant became necessary, and today's Gospel reading we see Jesus, the bearer of the new covenant, being subjected to testing again in the desert. He stands his ground and gives the enemy a good fight, thus showing that he is truly the Son of God. 
the first temptation of Jesus. The first temptation, my dear friends, was well timed. Jesus, as we know, had been fasting for 40 days. And since the people of Israel in the Old Testament had been miraculously fed by manna, why not the Son of God? So the devil puts an idea into his head. If you are the Son of God, command the stone to become bread, as we find in Luke chapter 4, 3. Notice that the first thing the devil does here is so a doubt in his mind. If you are the Son of God, in other words, are you really sure that God is with you? The same thing happened in the Garden of Eden. The first thing the tempter said to Eve was, did God really say to you that you should not eat of any fruit of the garden? Found in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. So dear friends, temptation always begins with a doubting thought. Did God really say this? Or is it one of those Sunday school fairy tales? Jesus overcame this temptation by refusing to entertain such doubts and by standing on the word of God. Note, secondly, the people are tempted only with what they need or what they want. After his fasting, Jesus needed to eat. He wanted something to eat and therefore the devil tempted him with food. It is not a sin for Jesus to eat after fasting. The sin lie in how the food is obtained. The means we employ to satisfy our need must be in accordance with the word of God. Feeding on the word of God is ultimately more important than feeding on bread. And Jesus, as he mentions, it is written, one does not leave by bread alone. The second temptation. In the second temptation, the devil asked Jesus to throw himself down from the pinnacle of the temple as a way to prove that he was the son of God. And this is analogous to Israel's testing of God at Massa and Meribah. Remember that the people were asking Jesus for a sign to prove that he was the Messiah and Jesus wanted to convince them that he was the one. But how do you do it? Devil suggested this sensational sky jump without a parachute. Again, use what you have to get what you want. Use your supernatural power to get the people to recognize you and believe in you as a son of God, the Messiah. And to this, again, Jesus says no. The God of Jesus Christ is not a God of the sensational, but a God who works through the ordinary, everyday things of life. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. The third temptation. In the third temptation, the devil shows Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and promises to give him authority over them if only Jesus would worship him. The temptation to gain the kingdoms of the world by worshipping the devil is analogous to Israel's temptation to worship other gods. Remember that Jesus was about to begin his public ministry and was looking for a way to get the whole world to know him and to accept him and the message of God. Again, the devil tempts to use what he has to get what he wants. My dear friends, the temptation points to our subtle attraction to doing the right thing by using the wrong means. And again, Jesus says no. The end does not justify the means. It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only Him. And each of these three temptations, what the devil is saying to Jesus is, Come on, use what you have to get what you want. And in each case, 
Jesus overcomes the temptation by replying, No, we can use only by godly means to satisfy our God-given needs or to pursue our goals in life. The devil was not trying to lure Jesus into something or some particular sin. Rather, he was trying to entice Jesus away from his mission, mainly through a temptation to become the political messiah of the Jewish expectations and to use his divine power to avoid suffering and death. Today, let us realize that as God's children, we too are under the constant testing. But instead of accepting it in faith, sometimes we become angry with God when He fails to respond to tests we have set for Him. And this test may be something like this. If my husband is ill of cancer, then I will know that God loves me. If my boy comes back safely from Iraq, I will know that God is on my side. If I get the job that I have been looking for, I know that God cares about me. Jesus teaches us that the spirit-filled life requires unconditional surrender to God's will. My dear friends, you can't stop birds flying over your head but you can prevent them from nesting in your hair. Temptations are such like those birds. Lent is an opportune time of the year when the church reminds us of what Christ has done for us and invites us all to make a constant decision to belong to Christ a grace-filled Lantern season. Join me next Friday at 6 p.m. to experience the goodness of God.